시셨습니까 여러분과 계속해서 함께 Hello, 진행합니다. Uh, did you have a nice lunch? I'm m u n s o r i the MC for this special occasion. From this session, this session will be proceeded in Korean, and you may use it on simultaneous interpreting service. This is the first 2021 Sejong Smart City International Forum held in Sejong City. In the morning session, we had the keynote speech session and various programs, and through the time, the we could understand where we are now and where we should be heading in the future to build a Sejong Smart City. Starting from this year, This forum will proceed for three days until, to, uh, until 19th, and then the, the, the entire session will be uh, provided online. Now, this session is session S, and Kim g w a n g s o k said it's a good session, and thank you very much. And uh, another person said that it's c h a r s a the smart city of Sejong. Now, let me begin this forum. As I introduced earlier, the main topic for this forum is Sejong Smart City, Sejong Answers. And the theme of the forum is Smart City, Sejong Answers. We have six main sessions named after Sejong. Sessions as S, E, J, O, and G. Each session will provide you a valuable time to explore the desirable future direction of the smart cities. And you may upload your replies. through the YouTube channel, and we'll provide a gift later this event. And various events are now available. Please visit our official website. Now, let us begin session S, the first session, session S. The keyword is S, which means that sustainable and safe city. Smart city solution, intelligent smart city solution, to protect our citizens' lives better. We have five distinct guests. Safer Smart City, Smart City that provides much convenience for citizens. Then what kind of technologies and efforts will be required to this end? So let me first invite the first speaker. Professor Park Seung-hee, School of Civil Architectural Engineering and Landscape Architecture of s o n g g y u n g a University. He is going to make a presentation on AI for Safety Korea ASK Solution Development for Smart City. Please welcome Mr. Park. Hello, everyone. I am Park Seung-hee, professor at s o n g g y u n g a University. I'm very honored to stand here uh, as the first speaker in S session. The main topic for my presentation is AI, Big Data Based AI for Safety Korea ASK Solution for Smart Cities. We may have disasters, a range of disasters in living in a city. And responding to such kind of disasters is very important, especially in the post-COVID era, COVID-19 era. So we should collect such kind of data and analyze the data, collect the data using AI. We need such kind of solution. So today I have prepared. Okay, today I'm going to introduce what ASK solution is to you. So AI solution for safety Korea, ASK solution. First, let me introduce the background of uh, introducing this solution. I cannot present all the relevant examples requiring this solution. So I've picked some of the situations here, such as, such as heat waves or wildfires. So I will introduce how this solution can be applied for such kind of digesters. Smart digester response. As I mentioned before, we need to provide a solution that can be felt by the ordinary citizens. 
So in that sense, we should utilize the big data to support decision-making process. So we need such kind of a solution to support decision-making process. And AI solutions are now widely being used for everyday applications like such, uh, for instance, chatbot solution. When there is a disaster, we need to collect disaster information. We need to respond to the disaster in real time and to minimize casualties, what kind of actions will be required. AI solution support us in making the right uh, decisions. And then there are a range of response, mid-digest response manuals in place. When we introduce the ASK solution, we need to um, apply this kind of existing manuals into the system. Because I cannot show you, the, I cannot demonstrate to you all the solutions today, so I will pick the two solutions: the solutions to respond to heat waves and wildfires. In recent five years, we have seen the frequent heat waves. So annually, about 19 people die because of heat-related diseases. In this city, Sejong also suffered some casualties because of heat waves. Due to the accelerating climate change, now the National Institute of Meteorological Research uh, forecasts that there will be more disaster relevant to two heat waves. In terms of wildfire, about annually, about 571 wildfires in Korea. And it is one of the representative social disasters, actually. Because of climate change, we are seeing more frequent warning against dry weather. And we are seeing an increasing risk of wildfires, massive wildfires. Then how we should respond to wildfires? So the solution that can support the decision-making process in responding to wildfires is critical. So disaster response. You may not be very familiar with this term, disaster response. How we can, it is about how we should respond to disasters. In the now we are living in the era of COVID-19. This is also a disaster. So we have a phased response manual from level one to level two, level three. We have uh, information collected in a temporal and spatial range from time to time, and then we need a support for decision-making process. There have been a wide range of researches in this regard, and then more recently, big data and the AI are being utilized in this field. It is not just a system to collect information. It helps analysis of data, and it helps most optimize the decision-making process. So, so ASK solution provides the answers for this, so I'm going to choose more about this solution. About one and a half years ago, President Moon also announced the national AI strategy. He said that the Korean government should be the AI government, which means that we should utilize the 5G AI or the big data to better respond to disasters. This kind of technical capabilities are required to better respond to the latest disasters such as COVID-19. 
The role of government is very critical. So, as part of the Korean New Deal policy, the intelligent government is required, as he mentioned. That's why the government decided to introduce the ASK solution. So, we have had some similar cases like a social big board or the real-time digital news monitoring system in other countries. In the California, U.S., they have seen the frequent wildfires, so they provide a solution called Firecast 3.0, and there's another project, IBM Watson Global Green Horizon. So the government officials as the control tower, they need to provide support, and they utilize this kind of solutions. So most advanced countries have these kind of solutions. So that's why the Korean government needs to adopt um, intel and uh, this type of intelligent solution. This is concept diagram. As you can see, the safety brain optimizer. You can see S diagnosis, S protection, and S optimization. All this is called S brain. Now, this S brain is under development in Korea. In the research R&D process, we established a test bed. Data 8 and data macro. We have large, a uh, big volume data server, and then the data is collected using the open API. And then, when an AI solution is developed, the AI solution learns data using this server. So, a range of unstructured data is analyzed to visualize the required information to for the control tower. The role of the control tower is very critical in case of emergency or disaster. So you can see the visualized data in real time and can make a decision on time. So when there's a disaster, for instance, uh, as I said, a heat wave or wildfire, heat wave related or the wildfire related data is managed on the platform. And as you can see on the slide, there will be a control tower formed. And the control tower needs a solution in making uh, decisions. So ASK solutions uh, can be used uh, at this point. So this is one of the representative AI solutions. Um, on the right side, you can upload the questions uh, about heat waves. And then the chatbot, the AI solution, responds to the questions. It provides the, the information of the vulnerable, location information of the vulnerable, and uh, it provides a solution how to establish the shelter and how can how to operate the shelter. By building, by uh, collecting this kind of information and making decisions, uh, we can better support the vulnerable, including the disabled and children to minimize the damage caused by heat waves. And then the digest response scenario in case of a wildfire. We have many solutions we can utilize to, to respond to um, wildfires. However, there are a range of uh, different data types, actually. So data can be collected through different routes. And then there is a real-time solution that we can use to dispatch your station, the fire by firefighters or the other equipment. These are important to minimize the damage. If we can utilize the big data, AI-based solutions, our response can be optimized. That is the point. 
So this is an example here. Firefighting, helicopters or drones can be used as well. Because uh, the sight of a wildfire is quite dangerous, even, even to firefighters. So we may utilize other um, kind of machines or tools like, like drones. Considering in the site circumstances, as you can see, an ASIC system um, can be used when there is a call about uh, the wildfire as ASIC system is activated. And then the drones can be dispatched to the site to scan the site information. And then the collected information is sent back to ASK information, as ASK system. And the information is visualized for firefighters. So the decision makers can make a right decision based on the visualized real-time information. Using this information, of course, we can minimize the damage. We have better or more intelligent solutions. This one is a computer vision, deep learning based computer vision technology. When there is a wildfire in this image, in this video clip, you can see, you can check the smoke, you can check, you can identify whether it is a smoke or it is not fire, it is or it is flame, or if there are some people there. Yes, so we can analyze whether people are near this wildfire point. Using this deep learning technology, we can clearly identify the point of a wildfire, the location of a wildfire, and then we can support the decision-making process with this data. Without this, it is not possible to contain the spread of wildfire. It is not possible to predict, actually, the possible damage of wildfire. And it will lead to a massive damage. This is also the computer vision technology. The drones take this image and then process these images to identify the affected area. And then, based on this, we can predict the damage going forward. This is a key element technology. So as I mentioned, the decision-making support system is very important. When uh, we need kind of information on the wildfire near Sejong City, ask server collects various information and uh, it analyzes the collected information and data. This is an example. I'm here, it's a kind of chatbot example. When Sejong City is equipped with this kind of intelligence solution, ask a solution, Sejong City can better respond to possible wildfires near Sejong City and to better protect the citizens of Sejong. So this solution will lead to enhancement of the capacity to, be, uh, to respond to disasters for the city. So in the control tower office, you can see the site in real time. This is UI screen, an example. When ask solution is activated, AI solutions or big data solutions are operated inside a server. And step by step, the solution requests and provides feedback on the required information. And then it also shows you some dangerous facilities near the wildfire point. This data 
shows that this is the making process uh, in case of heat waves. Information of the vulnerable nearby. Warning signs, warning signals are of course critical. However, we should think of how to respond at each different level of warnings. So ASK, ASK solution, ASK system can provide the required solutions. When ASK solution is properly operated, okay, we have the disaster response manual in place under the ministry. And we have four steps here. And then after response, after third staff phase, ASK can be utilized in the response level because the ASK system can support the analysis of big data or analysis of the required information. If we enhance our capacity to respond to disasters, we can station the limited resources properly, I mean, to better respond to the disaster, and we can minimize the casualties. So, four steps here, prevention, preparation, response, and the response plus ask and recovery in case of wildfire. By responding in these four or five steps, we can significantly reduce the casualties caused by wildfires. So as a natural gesture, I picked heat wave, and as a social gesture, I picked wildfire. For these two types of digesters, uh, if we use apply ask solution, or if we apply our ask solution to different types of digesters, including COVID-19, we can better analyze the data based on the big data or AI, information from images or videos or population. And if we apply a better kind of AI solution to ask, I, I think I can say that ask is the most optimized solution in this regard. I wanted to talk about the safety in this session, and I believe that ask a solution can enhance the safety of Sejong citizens. Actually, that is my hope. Okay, I'm going to wrap up my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Professor Baxi from Sangyukan University talked about the AI Safety Korea as solution. He introduced this solution. With that, he provided various stories. The emergency situation uh, taking place in urban area, there will be a lot of things that we need to do. So based on smart city, what we can do, all those were explained in the presentation. Now we're going to turn to second lecture. So second lecture, the topic is smart healthcare for protecting citizens' health. The head of Medical Service Innovation Division, Korea Health Industry Development Institute, Young Yi Im, is going to provide this presentation. Good afternoon. My name is Young Yi Im. I'm the head of Medical Service Innovation Division of KIDI. I'm going to talk about smart health care for protecting citizens' health in the sustainable and safe city session. So my presentation is made up of five sectors. First, 
It's about changes in the health and medical environment, how it has been changed over the past years. So let me talk about the environment changes. And second, according to the medical environment changes, how smart health care have been, has been evolved, I will be explained. And third, in a smart city, what is the smart health care? For example, this is prevention and also uh, the treatment. So uh, we'll talk about service model for disease prevention health management. And then I'm going to talk about service model for disease diagnosis and treatment. And lastly, I would like to talk about Digital New Deal Smart Medical Implementation, uh, which is a part of a, a new deal uh, led by the Korean government. So first, there have been a lot of changes in the health and medical environment. As you know uh, that the aging population and increase in medical expenses are the first in changes. So the number of the elderly people aged 65 and over uh, it was 15% in 2019, but by 2060, uh, the portion of these people will up, go up uh, about 40%. So it will uh, go up by three times. Triple, and also our the number of domestic baby boomers are going to increase, and so by 2026, the country entered a super aged society, and by 2050, uh, the Korea will be the world's second largest aging country. With this aging population, there will be a lot of a chronically ill patients, and national medical expenses will be also uh, go up. So this will act as a burden of support for each citizen, and also it is a financial threat in the future of the government. In fact, the share of medical expenses for the population aged 65 and over it has been on the rise. And also, medical expenses for the elderly accounted for 12.4% of medical expenses in health insurance and 40.8% of all medical expenses. So the rate of increase in elderly care expenses exceeds the increase in total health insurance. And the proportion of the elderly population and is expected to intensify further. So in the chart, you can see uh, that the trend of aging population is leading to a continuous increase in medical expenditures in each country. So in our country, I'm sorry. And you can see, so second changes in the health care environment is the changes in disease structure centered on chronic diseases. And also with the, a lot of a chronic uh, the degenerative diseases uh, are emerging, and also acute diseases are coming up. So the aging and lifestyle changes are accelerating the transition to chronic degenerative, degenerative diseases, resulting in a rapid increase in social cost. The World Economic Forum pointed out that the increase in chronic, chronic disease as a significant and probable threat, and the economic cost of five chronic diseases is expected to reach 4% of global GDP. And also, uh, the increase of the chronic diseases also reaches the high rate of death, which means that after treatment, uh, that care for the survivor, uh, the increase also increase the cost. And so I'd like to talk about the new disease last year and this year, the outbreak of COVID-19, and also the increased mobility across the regions and so that the world is not free from the infectious disease. So due to uh, this infectious dis diseases, there's a new, uh, the emerging needs of the health care. So the, for example, the C severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS, swine flu, Middle East respiratory syndrome, MERS, and COVID-19. So new infectious diseases are coming up in a cycle of five to seven years. And also the antibiotic resistant bacteria and genosis are also increasing. So with this, uh, the factors, the aging population and also ease of mobility and also new increase, new em diseases emerging, those are uh, the major changes uh, 
that we say that we need a new change, a new development for the healthcare sector. Along this, uh, we see that the increase in care complexity and also the increasing patient engagement. And care is taking place not just in hospital, but also at home. So there should be certain connection between the cares in hospitals and home. And also we need to take a very multi uh, the disciplinary approach uh, to diseases. And also with the development of diagnostic capabilities and biotechnology, the demands are coming very uh, complex and various care models are emerging. And from the patient's perspective, they see that a lot of channels, they can earn the information about their disease and also their needs for the treatment. Individualized needs are also increasing with the new disease emerging and also increase in the chronically ill uh, the patients are also increasing the burden for the healthcare workers. So in Korea, Korea's healthcare personnel, you can see uh, that the statistics, they, there are fewer clinically active personnel than the OECD average. And also the shortage of personnel, healthcare uh, personnel is expected to uh, continue. As you can see the COVID-19 uh, outbreak, we uh, are expecting to see uh, that the medical staffs are suffering from excessive work and burnout. And also, in particular, it is difficult to supply medical personnel in specific fields such as obstetrics and gynecology and psychiatry. So the lack of medical personnel is a risk of deteriorating the quality of medical services. So the, so far, uh, the quantitative and labor-intensive uh, healthcare personnel we may, uh, pursued, but this will not uh, meet the needs of the changing environment. So against this backdrop, we see that the increase in burden on the government budget and finance, and also it will increase the, uh, the financial burden to hospitals. And also we, need, we see that the hospitals should deal with the chronically ill uh, patients as well as the new emerging diseases. So without any of uh, the particular methods to deal with that, the burden of the, on the hospitals and the government budget are likely uh, to be very deteriorated. So in our medical expense uh, is increasing dramatically. It is not seen in any other sector. Fortunately, digital innovation is the one that we can see as a solution. So digital technology uh, and technology innovation can be combined with the medical technology. So we see that the boundary between digital and medical uh, technologies are breaking down. And also, the medical care is the primary application field of digital technology. So without digital technology, we cannot say that the medical care so we need to provide a uh, the predicting and preventing disease and customized treatments with uh, the digital technology. And also uh, the electronic medical record and also genome analysis and also uh, digital technologies outside of the existing medical system will take the lead in the medical health care area. This, there will be a lot of a applications, uh, the digital technology into the medical sector. So IoT, wearable devices, big data, we can see uh, that the high IT, ICT infrastructure development and also their perfectness is almost uh, the uh, in a full swing. And also uh, the, there are a lot of development of healthcare products and services that enable the collection, storage, and interpretation of medical information enables a lot of changes. And various healthcare products and uh, medical uh, products will be emerging thanks to uh, this technology innovation. So in conclusion, the development of ICT technology is accelerating the paradigm shift in the healthcare field, and in particular, big data technology is expected to play a pivotal role. In brief, so what have been changed in hospital services after COVID-19? So in, after the COVID-19, 
the hospitals and medical institutions are seeing uh, the hospital structure changing into two track uh, of infection and non-infection system. And also the outpatient and also sur surgery and also discharging this cycle of patient flow uh, is not appropriate for the chronic ill disease. So we need to uh, look at this patient flow again and then how we can uh, improve uh, the patient treatment, whether we can approach with a contactless or face-to-face -face treatment. So there has been a significant changes in the service providing. And lastly, in order to provide a safe medical treatment environment, how we can adopt digital technology, uh, not just to the diagnosis and treatment, but also to uh, the administration and operation of hospitals, including logistics. So hospital smart smartness is going to happen. So based on network comprehensive system, uh, we need to build this kind of system and also cope with the future demands in the medical sector. So local community based on uh, the health care, also within uh, the regional health care, and also tertiary and secondly, uh, hospitals will be mobilized to uh, cope with and provide a smart health care. So the future health care is taking place in urban area, I mean, in smart city, so that we can say that it's a smart city health care. So in a smart city health care, how people can enjoy their health and reducing uh, the reduced uh, the health cost. So in a smart, smart health care, e-health and m-health system or intelligent system, AI and interface connected device are going to be emerging, not just the state of the art technology items, but also uh, the smart tools smart healthcare system and uh, the accompanied medical device is going to be developed further. So left side, you can see that the uh, market outlook by major smart city services. And right side, you can see that the uh, um, left side, you can see the city platform market forecast, and right side, you can see the market outlook by major smart city services. So you can see that there will be a lot of a smart city platforms, smart pl uh, the healthcare platforms in a smart city. So what is the direction of the government? So in May 2019, the Korean government established and implemented a national strategy to secure competitiveness in the biohealth field, even before this COVID-19 outbreak. So first one is that the bio big data and data center hospital and new drug candidate big data or bio patent big data and public health public big data. Uh, we see you see that uh, the government has already noticed the importance of data by promoting five big data platforms that just I told you, and also. Uh, in, through the economic policy direction for the second half of 2020, the Digital New Deal, Green New Deal, and Job New Deal uh, were, were pre promoted by, by the government. So in particular, uh, through the Digital New Deal, uh, DNA, Data Network AI, uh, the econ ecosystem was strengthened, and also digital was embraced, and also safety was built. So you can see that the smart health care service model as below. So in a prevention stage, the before you go to the health hospital, you can also enjoy health at home uh, through the preventive services. And also there is a government-led uh, the preventive services. You can see on the left and right side. So when you have a disease, you need to have a, a quick diagnosis and also uh, you need to enjoy a good treatment. In a small hospital, how you can uh, make a good diagnosis and treatment? And also, what about the smart medical emergency services? You can see that there are major functions in a smart city services. So and you can see the major services of smart health care, smart home-oriented health care service. So your neighborhood or the nearby 
work, you can you can figure out your health status and then also secure the data about your health, which will be used for uh, the uh, prevention of any disease. That's a one uh, factor. And the other one is the intelligent infectious disease response services. So in city, different sectors, for example, traffic, environment, and disaster, those uh, sectors are connected to uh, the intelligent infectious disease response service. And second part is diagnosis and treatment. As I told you before, the diagnosis and treatment uh, are provided uh, by hospital mainly. So when I say smart hospital, it's not just about tertiary hospital. It includes a secondary uh, and tertiary hospital, and also the small clinics. And also, it includes a uh, nursing homes. So patients uh, can get the treatment through these medical providers, and also they can enjoy good health when they go back home. So services include all of those provided in hospital, but you can also get the services on the road, at home, and any of uh, the different places, how city can provide emergent uh, the medical services in an integrated way, that is the smart uh, emergency medical service, which also use traf uh, transport and environmental factors. So here in this uh, smart city, uh, the healthcare data is also the data, uh, integrated data, uh, which is also linked to uh, the big data integrated center and data center. So when I say the big data center, it is not a single data center. It's uh, the center that can connect it to the server center and also distributed center, which include healthcare center and also other uh, the centers. This healthcare data center can help store the individual health record. So in an eco smart city, how we can uh, use the healthcare information uh, for eco smart city healthcare services. First one is that you can see that the personalized data and also uh, the data coming from the device. So, so medical data and life log data are the ones uh, to cater to the individual health. And also weather data should be used as a very important uh, factor for maintaining the health. Last one is that transport data and also location data. So all the data that you can come across in the city. In a smart health care, the government and medical institutions as well as other uh, the entities will be included. So as I told you before, Big Data Center will play a critical role, and also med healthcare providers or institutions will also play a, an important role. And what we can see as an entity is the medical device or a medicine provider. And also you can see that the healthcare management service providers and also telecommunication companies and platform providers are the ones in our ecosystem, including the insurance company. So let me talk about smart home oriented uh, the healthcare services, as well as uh, the infectious disease response system, and also emergency system. So in a smart home center, healthcare services, you can see that the healthcare related data will be collected and this data will be transmitted to the big data center. And also in the big data center, you will see that the healthcare will be monitored and this uh, data will be connected to medical service provider. And next one is that the intelligent infectious disease response system uh, this means that we uh, implement, uh, establish, and oper operate the intelligent infectious response system. And the third one is that the smart hospital oriented medical service. We establish and operate smart medical and operate system, and it will be also connected to other health management service providers. So medical institutions will run with uh, the system which will uh, efficiently use resources. And next one is a smart emergency, uh, emergency medical services. 
which means that the developing the technology to cope with or respond to the emergency situation. Last one is about digital new deal, smart medical implementation. With, and I would like to talk about the smart hospital leading model development support project in the part of this digital new deal. So this has been led by the hospitals or medical institutions. So digital technology is now applying to the uh, operation of hospitals. So developed models can be applied to uh, the secondary and other the medical systems. So in 2020, we developed the tele-ICU model. So tertiary hospital and secondary hospital, uh, the patients in ICU have been taken care of by doctors in different uh, institutions. And second is that the infectious disease management solution. If there is any infectious disease uh, patients uh, you can find in a hospital, you will immediately uh, deal with them and then provide a uh, the infectious prediction, management, and response. So how you can optimizing the resource management in hospital? That's the uh, resource management solution. So we started the in-hospital patient safety management in 2021. So you can see that the falls and bad sores, uh, those kind of uh, the risks will be classified uh, immediately and provide uh, the appropriate treatment to patients. And also we have a smart special uh, word, which means that not just person, but also the robots and other systems will be mobilized to take care of patients. So when I say the digital new day smart medical implementation, there are all the entities in the community communities, and they will be all mobilized to take a, a provide a better health care. And so we can see that the hospitals and the government and also the people are the entities in a, a better health care uh, control in the country. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Young Yi Im, and thank you very much for your presentation. He made a presentation on the ways for smart healthcare. I hope that we can lead a healthier life in a smart city through the technical development. And thank you for your detailed explanation to build a smart, healthier city. Thank you very much. And the next speaker. Is Mr. Park Gil Chu. He's going to make a presentation on safety and operation management services for urban gas pipeline using drones and IoT technologies. Mr. Park Gil Chu from Mine IT is going to make a presentation. Please welcome him. Hello, everyone. I'm Park Gil Chu from Mine IT. I'm head of R&D department. The urban gas pipeline is the basic and critical infrastructure for the city. So I'm going to make a presentation on the urban gas pipeline safety and operation management service using drones and IOTs. It is not easy to see, actually, the urban gas pipelines on the street to supply the urban gas in a safe manner. We need to use a buried pipeline, I mean the pipeline underground, and the managing such kind of pipeline underground is critical and that requires many technologies actually. So I'm going to focus on that point today, what kind of technical elements are needed and what kind of services are needed for management of urban gas pipeline. First of all, let me briefly introduce you what services we are now providing and then how we can utilize these services. Regarding the urban pipeline safety operation management services, this was initiated back in 2020 actually as part of Smart City Pilot Project Sandbox Activation. 
Now, Miri IT, our company, is in charge of the establishment of the service, and the service operation will be done by Sejong City. Oh, the operation, the service will be operated by JB Company. The main content of this service is about the attaching IoT meters, smart meters to the pipelines, and if there is any leak or the illegal construction near the pipelines, or if there is any gas leak. Okay, the system, the IoT devices will monitor this kind of situation and project the risks to better respond to a possible disaster. Accidents may happen due to urban gas, for instance, Kaohsiung in Taiwan or the Manhattan in the U.S. It is not a frequent disaster, but once it happens, it can lead to a massive tragic disaster. So to preventing these kind of disasters and responding only as only possible to any disaster that occurred is critical, and we need to renovate relevant regulations and utilize the third generation kind of sort of industrial revolution technologies, such kind of such as AI or big data. This diagram is from the U.S. data. This is the, this diagram shows the main causes of the pipeline disasters. Corrosion, about 4 percent, and natural force, mainly due to the movement of the ground. Most gas pipelines are buried underground. And in the past, we thought that corrosion is the main cause of the pipeline disaster. However, actually, because of the welding, the wrong welding or wrong operation of pipelines or the excavation damages, these are the main causes of the disaster to the pipeline. These are actually the human errors. So preventing human errors is needed, and we need to apply technologies to prevent human errors. This is this slide shows the current status of um, the urban gas supply in Korea. The Korea coal gas supplies gas to about 33 companies, the urban gas companies nationwide. And then these companies lower the pressure and supplies the gas to consumers. The low pressure gas is actually supplied to general consumers so that you can use the gas to cook, I mean, for your gas burner or something like that. So low pressure gas pipeline is quite long. And about 30% of the gas pipelines, they are very old. So safety of these pipelines should be managed. And the Co uh, Korea Gas Safety Corporation is in charge of this part. So together with the coal gas, it conducts precision safety diagnosis in a regular I mean, the, in a regular manner. And uh, the, um, we found that uh, per one kilometer, there is about 1.5 risk factors. So this shows that why safety management is required. So to better manage the, the entire gas pipeline, we should apply IoT to enable the real-time monitoring and safety management. 
So we should control the situation, we should project the possible risks, and then we should manage the required responses to the possible disasters. That is, these are the main goals of our business. To demonstrate our services, let me narrow down some business scope. As you can see, this is an example. The gas pipelines may uh, be uh, installed, established uh, through the bridges or the underground or the, uh, through the buildings, the high rise buildings. So, for safety management of gas pipelines, especially for pipelines buried, okay, we installed IoT devices to the pipelines underground. And for pipelines, that go through the bridges of our buildings, we use, to, we use drones. So as I mentioned earlier, the main one of the main causes of the gas pipeline disaster is excavation, construction. So actually excavation, if you want to do excavation work, you need to first report it to, to the authorities. So, so, so kind of excavation works should be managed, should be monitored, and then checked up on a regular basis. So to support the safety management of gas pipelines, so we, as I said, we use the drones. And um, consumer facilities, uh, consuming facilities, uh, we installed the smart meter. Smart meters uh, can uh, can detect uh, any gas leak, and if there is any gas leak, it automatically shut down the gas. And it also monitors uh, the consumption, I mean the uses of gas uh, at each consumer in real time. It is a remote monitoring system. We collect data through the IoT devices and drones in real time and the control tower that judges the situation and the project the possible risks. It is a smart way of safety management. So this is a part of the Smart City Regulation Sandbox project. This service is applied to the District 5 hyphen 1 of Sejong City. This district in this city, um, the main seven services, including AI or IoT, is applied to this special district. So urban gas pipeline, urban gas pipeline uh, safety is related to two. It actually belongs to the, the environment and energy sectors. So now we are doing this business by using the kind of um, services provided by this sandbox. In the initial stage, there was no kind of necessary legal kind of framework. However, thanks to the sandbox, we obtained the necessary approval for our business. And then we are using our smart meters and other devices to monitor the gas facilities in real time. So main content of our services here. As you can see on the left side of the slide, there are various IoT devices, as you can see. First, the test, test box. The test box is buried underground, in, and there can be a kind of corrosion in the test box. So to manage this, we flow current to the test box to prevent corrosion. We have this technology. So this box can be used to, to this purpose, for this purpose, and earthquake or vibration may cause another risk, risk to the pipelines. So we installed some earthquake sensors and rectifiers and the terminal pressure 
terminal pressure means that okay, we measure the terminal pressure at the consumer point to verify whether the safe gas is applied to consumer or household. And vibration sensor and the smart meter, smart meter automatically shut down the gas if there is any gas leak. These are the, um, the IoT devices, and we have an IoT platform that collects data, and then the collected data is analyzed and processed based on big data. Okay, and then the data is used for safety management and operation services. As I mentioned, that the site is District 5-1 five, five of Sejong City. Now there are, now there are, the, this district is under construction. So based on this site, we are now building our solutions like this. To monitor the supervised excavation site in the past, we should check. I mean, we should do. Um, we needed to rely on kind of visual monitoring by humans. However, this time we applied, we used the drones to automatically detect, to automatically monitor the excavation works and to detect the passive gas leaks. This is a pilot project. And the drones should be safely operated, of course, because it is operated in a city. So in the initial stage, we thought that we, of course, thought over the ways to safely operate, safely fly drones. There can be kind of industrial accidents, like because of the batteries of drones or the privacy infringement. Uh, because the drones can take uh, um, take images. Even if we prepare like this, there can be an accident. So now we also our service is insured, of course. This is uh, the final result of the project. Okay, the slide is showing the comprehensive the status monitoring screen. So you can visual, you can see a visualized supply and consumption status of gas on the left bottom side. Uh, here is a device. It shows the voltage and current. So the test box shows the real-time monitoring information, and on the right side, a range of risks. If there is any kind of risks, the system detects it, and then the supervisor can see the risks from the control tower. And the intelligent, intelligent analysis and intelligent analysis can be monitored by the control, center, control, power, uh, control tower as well. At the center of the screen, you can see the excavator here. And if uh, this excavation work here, drones uh, can detect this uh, equipment. And if there is any gas leak because of uh, any possible damage to the gas pipelines, it detects it and sends the information directly to the control tower. And the GIS based real time monitoring service. Before we apply IoT devices um, to manage or to monitor the gas pipelines, the person in charge had to visit each site and to visually check 
the status of gas pipelines. However, by applying IoT devices, we can monitor the safety elements in real time from the control tower remotely if there is any kind of um, abnormal vibration. Of course, what kind of abnormal vibration is can be also detected from the control tower, and the, the safety personnel can be dispatched to the site. And the monitoring on the consumers, on the terminal households. If there's like any gas leak in a consumer site, the control tower, of course, it can detect it and send a service personnel to the consumer. For instance, um, some senior citizens uh, or some um, the vulnerable, if I mean the senior citizens living alone, if uh, a certain household does not use, does not consume gas, the system can project there can be possibly some kind of danger at the household. By comparing the consumption of gas in an apartment, if we use gas, the personnel in charge, they need to visit each household in an apartment to, to check, to, to measure the gas consumption, gas usage. However, using the smart meter, it is possible. The smart meter enables the remote monitoring and the checkup of the gas uses and the protection of risks of gas pipelines using the rectifiers. It, okay, it manages the pressure so to safely provide low pressure gas through the pipelines. If the pressure of the gas is lowered, much lower than expected, we can predict that there is a kind of possible gas leak in a certain a certain point. So we have established a deep learning based pressure monitoring system. So based on the system, we can predict the gas leak data. I mean the current gas leak data with the previous data to predict about a possible gas leak. For instance, this is more specific information. On the right side, the abnormal pressure gas leak um, management criteria. If even if a pressure is in in the in a normal range, if there is a kind of a pattern, kind of a declining pattern of pressure, we can predict there can be a even if there is a big small gas leak in a, at a certain point of a pipeline. In the past, it was not possible to predict this. However, based on the IoT devices or based on the, the AI systems, we can. Uh, detect even a small leak of gas. And then the possible um, effects, I mean, the expectations of our services. The urban gas is the source of the energies being used by every citizen. So managing gas in a safe manner is critical for lives of people in a city. Drones and IOTs, in the past, it was not possible to directly apply the IOTs or the drones for management of the drones. However, thanks to the sandbox, we now are applying these. And by applying these new technologies, we can create new jobs. From a technical point of view, point, cities, the size of a city will grow, which means that all the infrastructure will be buried, will be established underground. So to safely manage the, all the infrastructure, it is critical to manage the underground facilities. So by collecting the data, using IoT devices, 
you can manage it as a platform, safety platform. You can manage the seven utilities, including the electricity or pop, uh, gas. Last point, last one is about the ways to spread our services. Um, by conducting this demonstration project, we have acquired the safety monitoring system and then risk protection system based on the big data and AI. We have secured all these technologies. Based on these technologies, we can provide our solution for 33 gas companies nationwide. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation and said it. There are convenient devices, but uh, some are very dangerous. So how we can use them safely and conveniently? The response method and the system were uh, easily explained. Thank you very much for your presentation. Now we are having a, a the first second uh, Sejong Smart City Forum. This S session, the session theme is the sustainable and safe city. Now, we're going to listen to the presentation about smart safe city implemented through smart technology. Uh, the director, Lee Jung Min from Hong Kong Life Care is going to present it. Good afternoon. So let me introduce myself again. So in order to implement a smart city that is only available uh, imagination, we really want to implement it, this uh, smart city. So we are doing this in our Hong Kong Life. My name is Jung Min Lee from Hong Kong Life Care. So in this presentation, I'm going to use the word smart very often. So what is smart? So we need to define the smart first, and then I will uh, proceed with my presentation. So when you say the smart is, it means a very a uh, you are you have a very uh, brilliant and also clever. But I think smart means a very reasonable. So smart technology is uh, something that we can introduce technology in an appropriate way in an appropriate location. So in terms of reasonability and also uh, rational, how we can use this reasonable technology into uh, the appropriate application, uh, that's uh, what I'm going to talk about this in this presentation. So, so first, I'm going to talk about what is a safe life, safe living, and then I'm going to define the smart, safe city, and also let me take an example of uh, the smart uh, safe city services. So what is safe? Safety is literally on in Chinese character means that they're not dangerous and comfortable. And John in Chinese character means appear without being uh, mixed up. So in English, it is a safety. The safety ori originated from Latin word servus, which means that without harm, save something. So in total, safety means that not dangerous in very calm in uh, calm situation that's a state of calm and not dangerous that's a safety so if we keep uh, safe and calm and da not dangerous you feel happy and pleased so safety uh, is a prerequisite for happiness I should say so if that is the case, what does the safe, uh, we are, what does mean that we are safe? Commit, uh, commit say that uh, I'm not uh, the harm and also my property is not damaged. That's what we say as safe. So in order to keep safe uh, the status and manage the safe well, that's we should say it's a safe status. So this safe status uh, will have certain you know, examples. So many people say that you are free from disaster or accident, uh, but the problem is that disaster and uh, the accidents cannot be prevented. So if uh, this disaster and accident get larger, we said it is, it is a uh, atrocity. 
and speak uh, the cat catastrophe. So from the disaster to catastrophe, it is getting uh, the larger. I mean, as things are getting larger. So if you see this progress, you can see also you can also determine whether the society is uh, the sound or not. So evolving uh, from the disaster to catastrophe, in order to prevent catastrophe, what will be needed? The existing and predictable uh, risk should be uh, responded and prevented. We need to have that system in place. When you say we are safe, meaning that we should be responding to uh, the existing and predictable risks so that we can become safe. So in, in order to secure safety so far, we try to eliminate unsafe con the consciousness about the unsafe uh, safety from the person, so provide training and education uh, uh, to eliminate any unsafe consci consciousness uh, of the people uh, from childhood to adulthood. And also what we do, what sh we should do is that the eliminating uh, the unsafe e behavior from the people, maybe standard manual in SOP will be established uh, to el eliminate any unsafe behaviors. And also, we really need to eliminate or remove any unsafe status of objects. For example, the safety fence and also safety tools and eye safety device installation, those are the things in terms of remove and unsafe uh, status of the object. And also in order to minimize uh, the harms and damaging, uh, we also install the or put on certain protective gears and safety equipment so that we can minimize the size of the impact or damage from the accident. So let me ask you another question. So now we are, are we safe? And also, if you feel you are safe, your safety is going to be valid in the future as well. That's the question. So with that question, I would like to solve this question with the theme of smart city. I believe that the world has been already uh, converting or transforming into smart cities. So smart city means uh, that solving all the issues and problems of city with the smart technology, so increase or enhance the quality of citizens. So one thing that you might misunderstand about smart city is that smart city is like a solution which you can um, fix everything right away, but it's not that. It's uh, something that uh, the kind of evolution of the city from certain stage to uh, uh, the uh, higher stage. So, and also smart city is maximizing the efficiency. In time, that is the paradigm shift of this urban operation. And also, we need to strike the balanced project and harmonized project or development of the city. And at the same time, through the internet and smartphone, uh, citizens have increasing access to information and also engagement uh, into the policy making, decision making. So I believe that smart city emphasized the increase of the information acceptance by citizens. So if that is the case, what is the smart safe city? So the existing safe city is uh, achieved by the government or the state and provide safety in a passive way. So the ill effects of this is that citizens cannot uh, feel the safety uh, very closer to them. And also, in this existing safe city, you are not able to get sufficient data about safety. So since you don't collect the data about safety, you just you know, focus on uh, the response to the risks. So in a smart, safe city is different from the existing ones. We are combining and uh, fusing uh, the smart technology uh, for safety. So we are, our system is 
transforming from uh, the response to predictive measures. And also, we can collect the data uh, your time via IoT and also receive da data and analyze data so that uh, we can make a shift in accurate analysis so that uh, it will lead to the shift action and measures. And also, the citizens' demand has been, can be, you know, accepted both ways so that citizens can actually feel the safety in the city. So the multi uh, the channel and multi facet uh, channels will be used uh, for uh, to enhance safety in the city, in the smart city. So let me look at the latest trends of the smart uh, safe management from the predictive uh, prevention, preparedness, response, recovery, and research analysis, all in this area, uh, smart technologies are used. So the information is collected, analyzed, and also detect the disaster and asset in real time based on ICT. And also virtual training or drills can take place which will also affect uh, the citizens uh, practically, so that it will lead to a swift decision making. So let me talk about the architecture uh, pertaining to the smart, safe city services. So there are a lot of infrastructure available in the city, road, electricity, uh, the communication and transport, and the garbage collection. So. Smart safe city means uh, to efficiently manage and administer this urban infrastructure. But further, so this urban infrastructure will be turned into smart infrastructure by using uh, the network technology such as IoT and sensors. So this connected data will be stored in a cloud and efficiently um, maximize the resources in this cloud-based system. And then the data will be collected from all over the world, all uh, corners of the city. So this data will be conversed and shared with the different stakeholders under the cloud system. And the data generated from this cloud will be contributing to the city control and city uh, the infrastructure operation. The entire process, smart city uh, safety services will be generated. So under this architecture, we have various services. For example, uh, it's an earthquake shelter area. So earthquake shelter place will be guided by th through these services. So when earthquake uh, broke out, where well, you should escape your uh, evacuate. So the administrative information and spatial, spatial information, as well as external connection, for example, weather forecast uh, information will be connected to each other. So in the building, uh, whether there is any uh, earthquake proof uh, design is in place, and also the building area and other protective facilities are available. Those kind of uh, administrative information will be combined with uh, the space information, and those two will be uh, combined with uh, the weather information, such as earthquake outbreak, so that we can actively you know, provide and guide information to citizens so that they can evacuate safely. So second model is that the crime prevention model or security service. So we are using a lot of the services, security services such as SECOM. So by using IoT, drone, robot, AI, and desert tooling, we can provide a very reasonable uh, security system and services. So using IoT, any invaders and uh, infiltrators will be detected as an event. Mostly, the robots are coming around and work, uh, moving around. So usually, home robot can take care of our children. And also, uh, the robot, curating robot in the administrative office will uh, take a patrol. And 
these robots can be mobilized to any event taking place. So whether this event is real or not, that can be uh, screened by this robot. This screened data and event is uh, turns out the real one. In that case, robot can detect any abnormal behaviors or any patterns which is different from the normal. Uh, that will be uh, the collected as an image data, and this image data will be transmitted to uh, the drone through the image platform. And in the drone, uh, looking at the person who is uh, the trespass in your home, and uh, with this image it has, and the tracking this person. So this jury should be more uh, the event, uh, kind of the fleshed out more, but I think that this uh, could be uh, realized soon. And last year, we also suffered a lot uh, from floods and those kind of a uh, the weather conditions or extreme uh, weather events that can be also prevented or responded by uh, the digital technology, digital twin, IoT, and uh, weather information and administrative information will be com combined so that we can provide a better administrative services. So here, this one is the service we provided for Jeonju City. So the river water quality and water flow uh, were able to track through the sensors. As you can see, the pollutants are detected. The sensor will uh, signal this, and this signal will be transmitted to the public servants and also receiving uh, the weather information. Uh, the public officers can uh, forecast uh, the precipitation and also the overflow of the rivers can be predicted based on this uh, the information. And due to COVID-19, we have a lot of issues and problems. So I believe that COVID-19 response is also possible uh, through the smart safety management services. So digital twin can be combined to the temperature detection of the person. You can see this case in the video. So real time, the human temperature will be checked and detected, and how many people frequently uh, they visit a certain place. If there is a people with a COVID-19 symptom, will be detected and tracked. So when, when these people uh, pass through certain places, the, the vacuum cleaners and also air purifier will be activated to clean uh, the air. So let me talk about my company's product. So we are actively responding to the fire, uh, the accidents. So my company is uh, the making uh, the air inspirator and gas mask. We have a 93% market share in Korea. And we believe that our products can also use the for smart safety management services. It's the video clip about the Jecheon fire accident last year. So the illegal parking, uh, the block at the fire engine coming into this fire site. So fire engine should arrive the fire site as soon as possible. So we have a fire growth graph, as you can see, so eight minutes is after five minutes of the fire, the, you cannot uh, suppress the fire immediately. So our golden hour for fire suppression is five minutes. So in order to uh, make uh, this fire engine arrive on time, we need to remove any illegal parking of cars. You can see that the illegal parking is of the vehicles there and there. So between them, a uh, fire engine should go through and enter. So let me check whether that is possible. So fire engine uh, width is uh, 1.5 meter, and the, that hot ambulance is 2 meter. But this road, the entire width is a 7.3 meter through the CCTV. We calculated uh, the how our vehicles can go through. It's a 2.3 meter according to our real time calculation. So it means that this road is not available for our fire engine or ambulance. So in we cannot, uh, but based on this data, we cannot call all these uh, car owners to remove it. So we, our solution is to find the alternative route uh, to access the fire site. So somebody, maybe if there is a fire outbreak, somebody
somebody will make a phone call to 911, and then the fire station or fire department is going to decide whether the fire engine is going to be dispatched or not. So when you arrive at the fire site, and then fire engine uh, decide this is not the size of the fire they can suppress in the case they uh, call the uh, control center for further assistance. So the CCTV information that belongs to the local governments uh, will be shared by the fire department so we can make a the preliminary fire suppression plan before we arrive. And also illegal parking of the vehicles can be also avoided uh, to provide a the optimal route for the fire engine. That's what we are providing as a, a solution in our company. So here, uh, this is a fire safety platform architecture we have. Through this architecture, what kind of values we can provide? There are two. First one is that we can swiftly suppress the fire. Swift access of fire engine can enable the swift fire suppression. And also, secondly, we can also suppress fire safely. So with that two values, we created this value, uh, service. And the particularity of this service is uh, that it is a private leading. So mostly this kind of services are providing by, provided by the government, but it is very passive service. But this part has been uh, the mobilized, I mean, uh, converted to the private sector. So who are the recipients of these services? So building owners can enjoy the benefits of this service. So we uh, we decided to provide this service to the building owners. And for building owners, if we ask them to pay service fee, so what we were coming up is that the uh, discount insurance premium for these building owners. And in order to make that, we also get the, got the certification. So thanks to this service, these building owners can enjoy uh, the discount the insurance premium. And um, the part of this in a insurance premium goes to our service development. So you can see that the various services are available for a safe city. So services can be available separately, but also they can be interconnected to each other. In that interconnection, we need to have a platform. So let me talk about the requirements for this smart uh, safety service platform. So we need to have a more, uh, we have to be more open. We have to cooperate with more stakeholders and partners. And also, uh, we need to uh, expect less ownership, but it can be swiftly change it to the business and actual their commercial services. And also, we need to have a more diversified connection. But it should be also played or provided to the larger and broader area. But also, data from this can be applied to a new area, a new sector, so that we can get more data. So lastly, what is the role of the private company in terms of achieving smart, safe city? So let me show you what it is. So safe city and data, these two should be connected so that we can achieve smart, safe city. So these two should be interconnected to each other. So in between, private company is a bridge to provide services. So private companies to provide a uh, renewed information to the city and also get the information and data from the system, platform system. And the most important um, requirements for this is that we need to get more openness from the pri uh, public sector. So thank you for your attention. This concludes my presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Jung Min Lee. The city is where we live, which means that the safety of the city is important. As I introduced the cutting edge technologies and systems for safety of this city. Thank you very much for your presentation. So, this is the Association for Sustainable and Safe City. So, this is the intelligent 
to Smart City Solution for safety of citizens. This is now, let me invite the last speaker. He's going to make a presentation on 5G Plus Intelligent CCTV based Smart City Social Safety Platform. Mr. Kim Go Nu, Section Manager of Authentication Recognition Technology Research Section of ITRI. It's great to see you all. I'm Kim Go Nu from ITRI. As you may know well, so intelligence CCTV technologies uh, are combined with 5G, and now we have uh, some outputs from our research on this uh, sector. And so I'm going to introduce uh, how this uh, combined technologies can be applied for safety of a uh, smart city like Sejong. Before I go ahead, let me first to explain what 5G-based intelligence CCTV is. Let me first um, explain the background of this one. Ten government ministries announced the 5G Plus strategy, and among them, Ten main projects and five main services were announced, and ten core projects included the intelligence CCTV service. And as a subsequent project, the implementation 5G technology um, strategy was selected, and now the E3 and the Sejong City are jointly studying this field. So let me explain what intelligent smart city is and the current technical level status quo of the technology in Korea. I think you may heard of the 5G, uh, rather than the 5G, the, the intelligent CCTV technologies. So then how it can be combined with the 5G technologies? For what kind of applications? So let me first touch upon that. So intelligent CCTV. As you may know, it uses the fixed lines to monitor a fixed point, a fixed place. But when it's combined with the 5G technologies, the CCTVs can be mobile, which means that a mobile can, a CCTV can monitor various sites, various locations. So for this, uh, we need three types of technologies. So first, uh, we need three features. We need to secure three features of the technology. First, generality. This means that this 5G intelligence CCTVs can be able to recognize different types of possible crimes. So, and that's the first feature. And the second feature is that because this is a mobile CCTV, it should be able to detect a different environment, a different lighting, different illuminance, different streets. So different surroundings, different conditions. The CCTV, so this technology should be ad adaptable to these various, I mean, the changing conditions. And the third feature, which is most impo important, is about the security. The previous fixed line CCTV, the sensitive information can be sent and transmitted through the line. Because that is a fixed line, we can trust the infrastructure. However, if we use 5G technology for this, the data will be aired, I mean, broadcast through the 5G network. And then the fixed line, five, uh, the CCTV will just focus on a certain point, like a certain, like certain people or a certain site. However, if it is mobile, it is a different story. The mobile CCTV can monitor some private spaces, like some the inside a home or the inside offices. That is a possible scenario. So we need to focus on these three features with these new technologies. So 5G-based intelligence CCTV and what types of CCTVs will be available? Okay. Okay, simple explanation is you may think that we cut out the fixed line of a CCTV, okay, to enable the 5G intelligence CCTV. And by applying, I mean, by implementing 
using the 5G technology, we can reduce the operational cost. And uh, you may understand this way. That it, we are now expanding the scope of CCTV applications. If the CCTV is mobile, we can expand the scope of safety monitoring. CCTV can be wearable, can be portable, or can be, I mean, the the detail attached to the vehicles, or the CCTV can be mounted on the drones. Right? We should expand the basic definition, basic concept of CCTVs. Then, based on this new concept, let me explain what kind of technology we have now. So let me explain the currently available technologies for the detection of a collapse. Okay, this technology was actually first developed about 10 years ago. It is the one of the easiest, I, I think, the technologies. It is to detect a person collapsing. It is about how to detect the collapsing person. The care can be a person lying on the street, and then the system, the technology, judges determine whether the person is lying on the street or not. And second one is detecting violence. Some products, commercially available products, they actually have this kind of feature. However, this is not an easy technology to apply. The system may be confused whether these two people are just playing with each other or really they are fighting each other. The system should understand the actual situation, right? So that's why it is not an easy technology. And about stripping. Maybe stripping, detecting someone stripping can be easy. However, collecting the data and, and then the using the deep learning to learn the stripping people data is not easy. I mean, the collecting this kind of data, accumulating data is not easy. What about weapons, knives, or other types of weapons? It is not easy because we have other similar kind of goods or tools. It can be a simple stick, not a weapon, or it can be a weapon, a critical weapon. How we can distinguish between an umbrella or a weapon. So we are studying this part. What about the drunk person? A person staying at a, low, a certain point can be recognized as a, a drunk person, but that is not all. We should consider other points. And detection of crimes, accidents, and disasters. Currently, we are now using a technology to restore the car license plate. So maybe you may see this kind of, you may have seen this kind of technology in the films. I think this can be possible very soon with this technology. Starting from last year, this technology was applied for crime scenes. As I know of, the technology detected about 10 crime data. And in two cases, it identified, identified uh, some car uh, license plates. What about arson? We can detect arson. So we are developing a study AI technology to detect arson. But as I mentioned earlier, it is not easy to collect the necessary database. In case of fire, okay, in about the five to ten minutes, the fire will uh, be disastrous. So we need to detect it very in the very early stage. So. We augment the fire data to for um, the learning of the machine and the crime detection technology. You may think the minor report. Okay, if 
people, we cannot detect the sustainable possible crime in real time. We cannot create a crime prediction system. However, rather than crime prevention, crime prediction is more effective, and actually it is easier. Some people say that the statics do not lie. We have two types of models for our research. For near repeat model, first one is near repeat model. When there's a crime in a certain place, the same types of crimes can be repeated at the same place. Okay. The same about by 12 fold or 13 fold. Some of those people who, I mean, the, I mean, these possible criminals can repeat at the same time, can repeat the crimes at the same time. We can predict, so that's why I say that this kind of predicting the crime is easier than preventing crimes. And the risk terrain model, depending on the locations, so, I mean, the residential places. So. Okay, the types of crimes are different. Some sexual crimes in, in some kind of on the downtown area. So the crime prediction models, these different types of crime prediction models are used in advanced countries like the U.S. One of the, the product for is one of the representative crime prediction system. The, this system, okay, when we have an earthquake, there can be a kind of subsequent earthquake. So the earthquake pattern was similar to the patterns of crimes. Based on this, they invented, I mean, the projective policing, and this policy technology is used in various countries. And hot lab was used in the Chicago, in the U.S., and by applying this, they said that they was able to reduce the gun crimes by 30%. So based on the statics, it is possible to predict crimes and to respond to it preemptively. In the past, we just analyzed the statistical data, and then the system formulates a crime map, and it notifies what kind of crimes can may occur in what places. But with this model, this model cannot reflect the current status. This is the kind of limitations of the conventional model. However, we improved this point. We analyze the current status, and then we compare this current status with the previous data to fathom the risk level. And based on the risk level data, we can predict risks that may occur in the near future. On the left side of the slide, maybe you may see, you may have seen this in Selim Jong So, a person, a, a, a guy followed a woman, and he was, he was caught at the site. To watching this, uh, this CCTV screen image, that we cannot figure out whether the guy is dangerous or not. However, as a result, he was a dangerous man. So this is the basic idea of the projective system. Uh, this kind of situation can be repeated based on the probability the system can predict the dangerous situation. On the right side, this is a demonstration image. The system, when this kind, in this kind of situation, what kind of risks can may occur? The system can um, predict the risks that may occur. The Sejong city, the city um, monitoring the control tower. Um, may apply the system to detect the possible arson, fire, and then the control tower city information center can collect information and can dispatch firefighters to the site. And the system can also recognize the human faces. 
if there is arson, it automatically recognizes it, as you can see on the slide, and then it recognizes the faces of the suspect and can track the suspect. And the system, the technology can also track the vehicles of the suspect. Now, this technology has already been supplied, uh, applied to Sejong City by using multiple CCTVs. We can track a certain suspect or certain vehicle. So, this can be utilized, as I mentioned, to predict uh, possible dangers. This technology was developed and now in the commercialization level using the vehicles mounted on the vehicles. I mean, the, it can detect other vehicles. It can detect the name, I mean, the license plate of the vehicles. Or through the black box videos, it can automatically recognize the license plate. We have achieved 82% of the required the technology level. After complementing some points, I think we can raise the, the required technology level to 90%. So the black box took this video clip. It can detect the license plate of other vehicles like human beings. And additionally, you can also detect the vehicle models, about 42 vehicle models available in Korea. If this solution is applied to smart city of Sejong, I think this solution can be useful for uh, those areas where children should be protected, like school zone. The um, CCTV can detect the license plate of vehicles in school zone. And as I know of, there is a smart report system. So Sejong City is distributing the, the black boxes for vehicles, and then the black boxes are, can be used to, to collect the data from the street. So the reported images can be analyzed automatically by AI, not human beings, not by human beings. This means that every information that is collected can be analyzed and detected. It can be used for detection of risks without any human being. The system can do this job. The AI can do this job. This is the true intelligent 5G CCTV. When we apply drones like CCTV, drone is based on images, videos. The difference is about the viewpoint. The CCTV, the height of CCTV is about the height of our eyes. However, drones are much higher than CCTVs. So the facial recognition technology, if the distance is closer, the facial recognition level is not good. It's poorer. So rather, if the distance is longer, we can expect a better facial recognition level. So how so we should think of the current limitations of the technologies and the many R and Ds are R and D efforts are being put into this part. Uh, it is not possible to track to the, all the suspects or the crime scenes uh, only using the drones or CCTVs because of the regulatory some kind of limitations. However, drones can be used for other industrial purposes, industrial applications to detect the wildfires in the early stage, for instance. I have made this video clip. I have created this clip. Not this image was not um, taken. I mean, the, I mean, this is not a, a, a real video. This is a kind of a simulation video, so we can detect the smoke or flames or fire, and by use by creating this type of video, the videos can be used for machine learning. By the end of this year, I think this technology can be commercialized. This video here is an actual video clip of wildfire that occurred back in 2017. So the system can detect a small smoke 
a tiny smoke and flame. So the drone is flying over the, the parking lot of our um, entry, and it can detect the license plate, and it can detect the vehicle models. We have not tuned. At the time, we did not tune the technology to just to demonstra uh, demonstrate the technology level. And we confirmed that the higher level of technology. So regarding flying objects, we have the required legal framework or legal kind of basis that the drones can be used for the safety applications. And that this solution can be used as a wearable solution, portable solution. As you mentioned earlier, smart voting solution. Before you visit a polling, uh, I mean the voting place, you may just uh, forecast, you may predict how long it is going to take. I mean, uh, because the system can count to the number of people in the line, the voting line, and the information can be automatically sent to two other citizens. Okay, this can save the time of citizens. As a result, this is intelligent CCTV technology. How this can be applied? This technology can be felt by citizens. It is not just replacing people. It is about doing something that people cannot do. CITS, smart factory, or digital tuning. This can be a basis technology for other converged other types of industries. Even if I am practical, I, we do not. Even if we can be practical, we do not want infringement of our privacy, right? This kind of solutions is will be required. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kim Gonu. Thank you very much for your great presentation about the 5G Plus Intelligent CCTV based smart city safety platform. If it can be used for positive purposes or to enhance the safety of citizens, I think that will be wonderful. Okay. Okay, let me wrap up the session CSS. So the topic was of this session was sustainable and safe city, not just for the convenience of the city, but also the personal safety and also uh, the health were widely talked in the session. After uh, this session, we are going to have an E session as a second session, which has the topic of eco, green, and energy efficient city. So for uh, the sustainable eco city, how we can create uh, this kind of city that will be talked in this session. We're going to provide this session through the YouTube online. So now we're going to conclude this uh, session. Thank you very much. Thank you.